Can you tell what this is? It's a Japanese confection called yoi hanabi, or evening fireworks. As you can tell by the name, it symbolizes fireworks lighting up the evening sky. Japanese sweets like these are called wagashi. This delicate and beautiful treat was created by a confectioner named Sano Hiroyuki. His creations are one of a kind, unconventional both in taste and shape. You could even say they are works of art. The unique beauty and flavor of Sanno's wagashi are attracting attention outside Japan as well. We'll delve into the world of wagashi by taking a closer look at Sano's miniature masterpieces. A provincial town 270 kilometers from Tokyo. Sano's workshop is in his apartment. He doesn't have his own store. That's because he works as a freelance wagashi confectioner. This dough is called nerikiri. Basically, it's a white bean paste that's been colored and sweetened. It's typically used to make wagashi for the tea ceremony. White beans are boiled, and honey is mixed with yam to make nerikiri dough. This dough is then kneaded into different shapes. I'm going to put these six balls of dough together. This technique is called tsutsumi bokashi. It means wrap and blur. Wrapping the darker colors in white dough blurs the colors to create a lighter shade. Yoi hanabi is filled with a red bean paste called an. It's made by boiling beans in sugar water and is a key ingredient in wagashi. What I'm doing is based on traditional techniques of wagashi making. Now I'm going to shape it with this spatula. Then I'll use this spatula I made myself to create streaks. Pressing down with the spatula will bring the darker colors from under the white dough to the surface. Immediately after completing a piece of wagashi, he photographs his creation. He wasn't satisfied with photos taken by other photographers. So, with help from the internet, he taught himself how to do it. Yes, as you can see, I didn't spend a lot of money on equipment. I just adjust the lighting and the angle. I guess there are things only the creator understands. I see the size of the confection and have a specific vision of what angle I want to show it from. It's probably something only I can understand. That's why I take the pictures myself. When he's ready to take orders, he posts his photos on social media. That's how Sano runs his business without a store. People share his posts on Instagram and Twitter, so his creations have become widely known throughout Japan. For centuries, wagashi has evolved alongside the Japanese tea ceremony, chanoyu. 
During the Kamakura period, from the late 12th century, Zen monks began to incorporate tea into their daily routine. At that time, tea was usually accompanied by savory meat and vegetable buns. During the Muromachi period, from the 14th centuries, the samurai adopted the tea ceremony. They snacked on nuts, abalone, and roasted chestnuts. Then, during the Azuchi Momoyama period in the 16th centuries, sugar made its way to Japan, but it was not generally available. It wasn't until the relatively peaceful Edo period from the early 17th century that wagashi began to evolve significantly. Confectioners in Kyoto and Tokyo tried to outdo each other in the creativity of their products. Many of the wagashi styles we see today were created around this time. Confectioners began to devote the utmost care, not only to taste, but also to shape when making pieces for the tea ceremony. Each piece is meant to reflect the theme of the ceremony and the season. Wagashi are intended to be perfect little morsels to be enjoyed as part of the tea ceremony. Contemporary Wagashi master Sano, on the other hand, wanted to transcend traditional boundaries while respecting the confection's cultural roots. Wagashi intended for the tea ceremony all look and taste similar. So there's no point in buying them. That's why I make wagashi that are not meant for the tea ceremony, but for anyone. I try to integrate modern culture into my confections, but I don't ignore traditional culture either. I haven't abandoned traditional wagashi. If I put six pieces in a box, I'll put in five traditional pieces and one new eye-catching piece. That way, the person who buys it can rediscover Japanese culture and traditional wagashi. I'm going to make a batch of wagashi for tomorrow. I'll do my best, although I'll probably have to pull an all-nighter. Sano still had a lot of work to do before his sales event the following day. Sano holds these events once a season. This time, the theme is Christmas. He plans on selling 90 boxes of six wagashi each, as well as some by the piece. For one of them, he's using an unusual kind of fruit. A snowman because it's winter. As filling, I'm using raspberry-flavoured an. It's not very common, but actually red bean paste goes with anything, especially with acidic fruits like raspberries. It gives it a refreshing taste. Normally, wagashi confectioners avoid ingredients with prominent tastes and smells that could overwhelm Japanese tea. But Sano dared to break this rule. He boiled red beans in sugar water to make regular on and mixed in the raspberry. The raspberry taste is extremely strong. Sano's raspberry flavored on would never have been created if the wagashi was intended for the tea ceremony. How unconventional is Sano's approach to wagashi? The proprietor of Kawaguchiya a wagashi shop that's been in business for over 350 years, explains. Watanabe Kenji 
is the 15th generation owner. He's been making wagashi for over 50 years. The seasons are one of the main reasons we sell different confections every month. And the Japanese tea ceremony is not complete without wagashi. But the star of the ceremony is always the tea. The tea is green, but wagashi can add seasonal elements. Tea and wagashi each play their own roles while creating harmony. I think wagashi should not play the main role. It should stay in the background. We showed him Sano's Instagram page. My first impression is that he uses amazing colors, very light and fresh. The soft colors make me want to eat them. The wagashi in the form of a chrysanthemum can probably be used for the tea ceremony as well. But wagashi shaped like goldfish or fruit can't be used for the tea ceremony. That being said, if we get caught up in stereotypes, we can't be creative. So I want him to continue doing whatever he wants. Wagashi sold at long-established shops are expected to be traditional kinds that go well with Japanese tea. In order to make wagashi that everyone can enjoy, Sano decided to go freelance. But how did he make that happen? Sano's parents own a long-established wagashi shop. After graduating from high school, he started learning the trade. He became an apprentice at a small shop that was famous for its technique and taste. Here, he learned the basics of wagashi making and to treat each creation with care. When Sano came home from his apprenticeship, his father rejected his new approach to wagashi. My father can be stubborn, and when I told him I wouldn't be able to fulfill my dreams if I stayed and that I couldn't picture my future here, he told me, you're not my son anymore, get out. Following that conversation, I actually left home. Sano then started working for a company that mass-produced wagashi using machines. He managed the factory there for over 10 years. It allowed me to view wagashi from many different angles. I learned a lot. He also actively participated in workshops and competitions. He went on to win several prizes in wagashi contests. In 2012, he won the grand prize in a national contest and was recognized by the Japan Wagashi Association for excellence in wagashi making. The theme of one workshop was fireworks. That was when he first made the yoi hanabi design and surprised the other participants with a completely different style of wagashi. Sano was full of confidence. Yet, no matter how many prizes he won, or whatever creative wagashi he made, his bosses treated him as just another employee. They didn't recognize him for his skills. Soon, Sano was overcome by doubt. One day, I lost my enthusiasm to work hard for that company. It was during this time that Sano volunteered at an event that would completely change the way he worked. Mm -hmm. 
This cafe is run by one of Sano's fellow volunteers, Shibata Norika. We met at a monthly event called Night Sky Cafe. He was working very efficiently. Many of the volunteers were students, but he seemed very mature. It made me wonder why he was working as a volunteer. No one at the event knew he was such an impressive person and called him Sanchan. Sano was asked to bring Wagashi to a tea gathering held at Norika's cafe every month. They were very well received. Soon, he was offered the chance to hold his first Wagashi sales event. I was happy I was able to make my own Wagashi and show off my skills. Since then, customers have lined up. We were surprised at the first. <laughs> Sano was now able to make wagashi in his own style, and his customers loved it. Finally, he decided to quit his job. One day, he posted a photo on social media. It was a picture of the yoi hanabi he'd made at a wagashi workshop. It wasn't properly appreciated at his previous workplace, but he was proud of his creation. Soon, Yoi Hanabi started trending on social media, not only in Japan, but abroad as well. Today, we have social media platforms to express ourselves. I had a feeling that if I were consistent, I could run my own business without a physical store. That was the beginning of my business approach. It wasn't like I didn't have doubts. It's past midnight, but preparations for his Christmas sales event are still in full swing. Sano is starting to feel pressed for time. These azuki beans are called dainagon. I cook them in sugar and now I'll use them to cover a red bean paste made from a different sort of azuki bean. Later, glazing it with agar will make it glossy and better looking. Time is running out. At dawn, he still isn't finished. There are only a few hours left until the event kicks off. Yeah, I'm behind, but I think I can make it in time. This time of year, I need to make tangerines and snowmen. Both of them require a lot of time and effort. Especially the tangerines, because I can't make them in advance. 
I have to make them on the day of the event, so I keep running out of time. Sano's wife has come to help. Yes, usually in the morning. His wife is in her final months of pregnancy, but she's still here to lend a hand. No, not at all. She encouraged me to quit. She probably believes in my skills and sense more than anyone. Sano lives with his wife and two children. His family provides him with emotional support. <laughs> when I see them sleeping, it gives me strength to keep pushing. They're my emotional support. Finally, it's sunrise. Sano always seems happy when he's talking to his wife. It is now 30 minutes until departure, but Sano is still working. He is making some more wagashi to sell by the piece. This is it. At last, all six kinds of Christmas wagashi are ready. They are sure to bring joy to his customers. This time, he also made one shaped like a tangerine, a winter staple in Japan. He should be on the road by now. Thank you. I'll do my best. I have so much to do. I actually wanted to sort out the orders, but I don't have time. He ties the sleeves of his kimono with the cord to fire himself up. He arrived without a minute to spare.
プラタ様はい。娘たちがすごい。なかなか予約が取れなくて、今日たまたま取れてラッキーでした。インスタグラムをされてるのでそこでいろいろ見せていただいて予約させていただいてますあの歌詞一つ一つの作りがとっても繊細で芸術作品みたいなんですけど食べてもくどくないっていうか上品な甘さでもういくつ食べても飽きないっていう感じですねいつもこんなふうに中身はあんまりよくわからないままって感じなんか開けた時の楽しみとなんだろう浅野さんだったらどんなお菓子かなっていうなんかちょっと期待を込めて買わせてもらってますたまたまです,たまたまです,すごい美しすぎて食べれない感じがするんですけど<笑>えっとインスタで見ましたちなみに一番気になってたのはどれですか一番気になってたのやっぱりこの雪だるまが可愛いなと思ってはい来ました He prepared 90 boxes of wagashi sets for the day 120 were sold by the piece. By noon, everything was gone. Yes, I do. I'm asked to teach people how to make Japanese confections or to demonstrate wagashi making at exhibitions. I am open to these kind of opportunities as well. I want everyone to know that Japan has this amazing culture of wagashi. ここから追随して同じような手法で来る人いるでしょうね。うん、うん、うん、まあ、Well, maybe, but I don't think anyone can beat the quality of my confections. そこは絶対的な自信を持っている。Yes, I know I make the most unique wagashi. Japan's first freelance wagashi confectioner, Sano Hiroyuki. His eye catching yet traditional confections are now being shared on social media all over the world. <laughs>